Hello, this is the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date's February the 5th, 2019, and we had a, another great day today. We were patient, and I'm going to hand this over to Miss Vegas. Hello, Miss okay. Vegas. Okay. Hi, everyone. Hope everyone had a really good trading day. And uh, I want to talk about uh, a few different stocks, but also... Um, I'm going to also try to cover off some, you know, different kinds of trading strategies, uh, especially because, you know, we want to really help people with uh, a small account. Okay, so the first, uh, I'm going to list them all first. So we're going to talk about Cron, which is, you guys know, the marijuana stock. We're going to talk about an OTC pick called Shrimp, S-H-M-P, and we're going to talk about GE. We're going to talk about BA, which is Boeing. And last but not least, I want to talk about FXI, and those are the iShares China large cap. So we're first going to start off with Cron, C-R-O-N, and as you know, this is a um, stock that is very near and dear to Jim's heart, and he's been super bullish on this. I mean, I've been too, and the Kronos Group's had quite a run even just this past week and i'm going to turn it over to jim just to talk about what's been happening and what he kind of sees with this because a lot of people made very good money on it on monday and then sold the stock and then people were buying dips today and made money again i mean jim just calls them left right and center so um i'm just going to turn it right over to you jim and you can talk all about chronos group all right well let's talk about chronos Here's the 20-day chart right here, but I'm going to pull up the year and let you have a little gathering at it. And there we go. So we called this stock out last year, right about in January, June. And I've been watching this for almost a year. But once that farm bill broke out, this stock started running. And we had a low support down here right around 645. And it, we hovered in this area for, oh, about four or five months. And in the past two months, we've had a pretty good little run on this stock. So, and I called this out at 10.15, told the room it was going to go to 20. I know I'm a broken record, but then we're going to pull up the 20-day chart right here. And it followed this trend line all the way up here in the past 10 days, past two weeks. And it's kept in that trend line all the way up to there. And then we broke out of it. Um, we broke out of it uh, Monday, and we broke out of it. And then we started selling off. People are starting to short this stock. At least the news is out that it's overextended. That's that's the only reason that they're shorting it right now. So, you know, they downgrade it. They do whatever they can to get the sellers to come into this stock. But it held out pretty good at support level. And I'm going to pull up the five-day chart and have a little look at it. And you can see how it kind of went below the trend line a couple of times. And then, you know, I've got all these different channels that I've been calling support out. And I've hit about every one of them. And this morning when I came in the room... I said, this ain't going to pull back to a certain support level. And let me pull up the daily. And that support level was right here around 255 to 2108. 255 to 2108. And then right when the bell rung, the thing I mean, it was already going down pre-market. So right when that bell rung, it dipped right down to, <laughs> I couldn't believe this, it, it, it hit exactly at 2056. I was just one penny off. And to me, that's a pretty good, I mean, that, but I charted this when it was right about in here as it was coming down to 21, it was around 22.29. And I said, once the bell rings, the thing's going to dip on down to support level. And I was calling it right around 21.08 to 20.55. But it did knife down here to 20.56. And then everybody in the room got in it, scalped it up to the 200 SMA, which is right here. And then it ran past the 200 SMA up above my trend line that I've, I had on here. And that was definitely a time to sell this, this stock. Well, the 50 days started curling down. And once that happened, the wedge started going down right here. You can see that little wedge. And then I hit bingo on top of... Up on to, it, okay, I said bingo hit top of today's support channel. And then started hovering around that, that support channel and bouncing up off it. You see it bounced once here and it hit that 100. And then it pulled on back under the channel, inside the channel. 
and then it bounced on up and hit my little trend line that I had up here at 2255. Now I didn't make these up. These were off this morning's breakout and from the previous day. And that's where I was calling the supports. I didn't add them on just now or at the end of the day. That's when I did it. Then it pulled on back and hit that channel. And then we kind of just hovered around and consolidated and closed right here at 2183. After hours, it's at 2174. So I'm going to look at the five-day chart on this one more time. And I'm going to just see if I can gather a little information for another pullback. Definitely support's going to be in this blue channel right here. And if it wants to go below that, I got another little support channel right here, which was last Thursday's previous high. So if it stays in there, that'll be good. I'm still very bullish on this stock. I'm just playing the dips until it turns around again. Because um, what I like being in the now, and I think traders are have had had to run up. And now they're going to try to run it down a little bit. So we're bullish, definitely 100% bullish on Cron. We're just playing the pullbacks, and I played it perfectly today. And the next one we're going to talk about is a call that Vegas and our OTC guy in room made. And it's something that's, that's very delicious, and it's the most ate seafood out there in the ocean. That's right. And it's called shrimp. S-H-M-P. It's actually called the Natural Shrimp Company. And, uh, you know, they did have a news a while back, but, you know, basically this company, they do, they're into shrimp farming and they've developed a patent, um, that can actually help with the shrimp working in its own natural harvest. And, um, basically they look to deliver fresh shrimp to restaurants and markets far from the sea. And they're trying to basically, their strategy is that, by using their patented technology, you actually, they're trying to prove that you don't really need a huge ocean of salt water like the Gulf of Mexico to raise shrimp. You can actually grow it and commercialize proportions and specialized tanks actually on land. So that's kind of like, you know, their selling strategy on how their product actually works. And let me tell you, this stock... We've had this one alerted, and I know a lot of you listen to the videos. We're talking about shrimp from like below two cents. And did you see where this went today? Like, where did this really go? Thirty-three ninety-nine. And you know, I was forecasting thirty-five cents, but it went to thirty-three ninety-nine. Not bad. I mean, almost thirty-four cents, and basically a penny, like one point one cents below my forecast so it's actually not bad um so people did very well i know people that sold off even at 20 cents yesterday and just scalped it again today so i mean people made good money on this because it's so cheap and you with because it's an otc stock you can buy so many more shares than you can on the other boards and make so much money on such a small investment uh, for a day trade. So Jim, over to you on what happened with that chart, because I know it did pull back after. Yeah. But what a run this has had. When I say the shrimp is the most consumed seafood in the world, we're talking about 9 billion pounds of shrimp annually. And here in the United States alone, it's 1.8 billion consumed in the United States alone. So that's approximately 45% of the global supply of shrimp that's caught out of the ocean. And just imagine that. And and to be able to raise it like that is just going to be overwhelming for the shrimp market. And there's, it's just not shrimp that they're going to be raising, too. There's other other, other uh, species that they're going to be raising also in these farms. So let's talk about the shrimp chart. I ain't no shrimp, that's for sure. We called this thing, and we put up the 20. First, I want to just look at the year real fast and just show you how, the, how we surpassed the year high here which is right around 13.6 and then the last two days we ran it from 10 oh i'd say around 10 cents all the way up to 30 to 30 34 cents just and and then i'm going to bring this on down to a, a smaller level here look at the 20 day you can see how it kind of broke out when it was called in the room here at 12 12 7 at a at a low and then it bounced on up and then just immaculate and and i did and I, 
I wish I'd have jumped in this trade a long time ago, and I didn't. So that's my own fault. But Vegas did catch on to it, and she, she did pretty well in it. So we've had a pullback. We had the big run today, and it's way overextended. Way overextended right now. So it does need to kind of consolidate a little bit. And I think we might get us a little bounce on this tomorrow, and I'll show you why. I'm going to pull up the five-day, five-day, five-minute. And I had a little bitty uh, pullback here earlier today, right around this area, right around 24 cents, a little bit under. And she went ahead right after hours, closed right there, and looks like we got a little bit of green going on here after hours. So I'm going to pull up the one day, one minute. And I have these different support levels on here, and you're, you're more than gladly to go ahead and pause this and write these numbers down. And let me draw one more little trend line in here that I see that needs to be in here. And that's going to be right, actually it could be two of them, but we're going to take it right in here, right around 23.43, and then we could run this up, this little trend line up to about 24.19. And you could darken that in there, and that's probably going to be your first support. And then your second one's going to be down here around 20 cents, and I did call a 20 cent pullback today after the big breakout up here at 34, because it's just a healthy thing to do. And but we did stop here at this first support level at 2348. And I'm looking at the level two right now, and it's kind of not, it's pretty, not very, it's pretty tight spread between the bid and the ask. So we'll come in here tomorrow. I'm going to probably jump in and scalp it, maybe hold a small core position, but I'm not going to really go in big. I'd, I'd rather just see the pattern, how it's going to trade, see if we can get back up here to this 34 area and have us a double top breakout. And that's shrimp, and that was a real good call in the room. And I want to give kudos to Kiko, and also want to give kudos to Vegas for, for telling the room about this trade. It's one of our best trades of the year so far. Great. The next, the next one we're going to talk about is one that Vegas and I teamed up on today. And that's going to be GE. And let's have let's let, let her have her piece here. <laughs> My little piece. Yep. So, um, you know, I, you know, GE's had uh, quite a remarkable uh, little run. I mean, from when we, you know, go back as far as December to now, I mean, it's had a nice, nice run. And, uh, you know, there was some news also on GE. And uh, let me just pull up this news here. Good news um, and bad news, kind of. Yeah, it had a, a bit of a little bit of everything, but. Um, nevertheless, uh, it looks, you know, I was staring at the screen today and I'm like, you know, geez, looking really interesting to me today. I mean, I, I'm bullish on the stock, but for some reason, it, when it made the high of day, um, I saw here, uh, 1034 was the high, as you guys know, from yesterday. And I was watching this stock this morning cause it opened at 1025, pulled back to around 1017. And then I, you know, said to Jim, you know, Jim, can you look at GE? He's like, yeah, no problem. So he pulls it up and he, uh, he's, he says, oh, it looks good. I said, Jim, it's going to get very interesting because it's about to break the high of 1034. I said, if this breaks, where do you see the stock going? And he said, hold on a sec. And he's like, you know what? This is going to go to 1050 for sure today with the volume and from what I'm seeing on the chart. And you know what? He was dead on. So what happened is because he said 1050 right away, because you guys know I'm really trying to help people make money with options, especially, you know, the small accounts. And uh, right away, I ran to the options platform on my desktop and I found an option call for a GE that expires on the 15th of February. So not till next Friday. And it was 17 cents for the 1050 calls and i said to jim what are your thoughts on this ge call because it's 17 cents it expires next week based on your 1050 and he's like you know what that's a no-brainer i said perfect so i shared it with the room and my goodness i have to congratulate people because the room or whoever participated in the option idea um, they are almost a hundred percent. I mean, the option is 17 cents was the alert. Looks like it closed around 33 cents and we will see where this opens tomorrow morning. So there's still going to be some interest here on GE and there's still an opportunity to make money on this option call 
because it's still, in my opinion, still reasonably priced, even at 33 cents, because there's still another week and two days left for this to expire. And hopefully if there's a continuation, once I hear Jim's chart analysis, that will help you determine if you're going to check this out for an option call tomorrow. So Jim, where, what do you see here with GE? Because it's had a beautiful run. It actually broke the 1050 and had a pretty strong close here. And my God, this volume is just so amazing. Yep. Well, I'm going to pull up where I called this thing out at. And I don't know if it'll do it on the 20 day or not. Nope. So we're going to go up here to about a month. Nope. We'll go to a three month. And right down in this area right down here. And again, I'll sound like a broken record. But I called this down here around seven bucks. It had an upgrade. And once it had that upgrade, it just went ahead and went on up. And we had that big gap right here where it jumped up. And we were in the room talking, is it going to go to 10? Is it going to go to 10? Well, it finally did go to 10. So I'm going to pull up what I think is a pretty good little 20-day uh, chart here. We had that big breakout right here. And then we hit that 1077 high. And then when we hit that 1077 high, it pulled back to that $10 area again, but went down to 1095 with a double bottom. So I'm, you know, I'm, I'm sitting here and I bought me a little bit of these GE calls and I sold them when it jumped up here at about 1041 and got on out, took a little bit of profit. Then it pulled on back right when I did that and then kind of went up about to the pivot point, pulled on back to that support level at 1015 again. And then today it was brought up in the room when Vegas mentioned it. And I said, yeah, this thing's definitely going to go up to that 1050 almost pretty fast. I mean, it's going to do it. I was pretty pretty strong about that. And what we had to break was that 1048 area. That's what I had as red line resistance. Well, we did that right in right into about close. And I said, oh, 1050, give or take a cent. And so she went, she jumped up. She hit a high today. Let me pull this up on a daily one minute. And see, this is the next resistance, 1077. But you got to kind of, you know, I'm thinking we're, we might be a little bit overextended just a little bit because of, you know, the way the news is. And it did get a big government contract, which was good for it. And that's what caused this last run to boost up. But then they got some other news that's kind of iffy about they're wanting to sue, shareholders are wanting to sue about misinformation on on what. But I don't take that too too much in consideration. So we got a little top up here. We got a break right around the 64, 65 area to continue on up. And right now, after hours, we are at the 64, 1064. And we'll need to bust up past that 1077 to have a continuation. If not, the stock can pull back a little bit. And I expect it to pull back to maybe this 1048 area and maybe bounce off that. That's where it had its last little consolidation period. First, it might stop at the 56, but not hang around much and just go on down to that 1048. So I'm just, I'm still bullish on it, but I'm not as bullish as I was when it was down there at seven bucks. And that's General Electric. And, but today I got bullish because just look at this action all the way from 1014 to 1065 and a slow, gradual climb up. And there was not too much dippage on it. Just one, one or two times it got a little frantic-y. Pulled back to 1021 and then bounced on up and created a new high. Pulled back and hit the moving averages, bounced up. And these three moving averages are my favorite ones on breakout stocks. They're the uh, 50, the 100, and the 200 SMA. And that's GE. So keep it on watch and congratulations to everybody that took the options play today. And the next, okay. this next one is just really a big winner for the room. <gasps> Well, you know what? I got to talk about the stock because, you know, if if it wasn't for the options land, there is no way that I would per personally be putting money in this stock. Not because it's not good. It's just a fortune. I mean, I'd have to buy at least 500 shares to make some money or at least 200 shares. And this is called the Boeing Company. And my goodness, Boeing is just flying to the moon. Um, this company, as you guys know, they've had so many... So much news. And, uh, you know, one of the pieces of news actually with Boeing is, um, you know, they first of all had uh, very good uh, earnings. They also had um, news that they are doing a supersonic business jet. 
which is the dream of billionaire Robert Bass, who wins Boeing backing. Okay. And I'm going to, I can show you guys an article later, but they're joining with a company called Arion. And it's a startup founded by Texas billionaire Robert Bass. Uh, some of you that live in Texas probably are familiar with his name. And they're building, like I said, a supersonic business jet that would cut the flight times by three hours, transatlantic flight times. So the aerospace giant is going to make a significant investment in Arion. So this is huge. Yeah. Like that this Boeing is going to invest in Arion. And um, it's first from a plane maker. Okay, so Arion has never had an actual uh, plane maker for, like Boeing um, give them this kind of, you know, invest in them. And what they're going to be doing is they're going to accelerate the design and development. And Boeing will replace Lockheed Martin, which had announced a partnership with Arion in 2017. So that's very interesting. Um, you know, and also I want to mention GE is somehow connected to this because GE in October said that it completed the initial engine design for Arion's AS2 aircraft to fly faster than the speed of sound while meeting noise and emission rules. So in a way, GE is connected a little here too, Jim. So that's interesting to know. Yes. Uh, so BA has had a new 52 week high. And uh, what obviously because the stock is so expensive, you you guys listening to this YouTube must be thinking, why is she talking to us about the stock? I mean, I can't buy the stock, and I so get it. Um, but from the options perspective, um, you know, BA was alerted a few times today in our chat room. But the one that interests me the most was because there was one option idea that was shared for the March first expiry for the strike price of $425 and that was going for at the time uh, $2.96 which is you know $296 just for one contract but you know what I'd rather put $296 into this than have to buy one share for $400 so I'm, I feel like I'm still getting the stock for a good price and already the option is up to three, $365 so I'm already up on the option trade personally $69 um and I still have until March 1st to like sell it I have so much time so I'm gonna be excited to see where this goes tomorrow and I'll keep you guys posted so definitely even if you're not in it it does not matter you can still monitor it on your end to see where this goes so it is uh not a lot of money to have to put in under $300 and it's already at 365 and I'm sure it's going to be more than that tomorrow and remains to be seen. But Jim, I would love your take on the chart because this is just super bullish for me. Yep. But I would love to hear your thoughts on where Boeing can probably go, considering all the factors involved here, with the news and the chart and the new 52 week high. It has not seen this kind of price. in I don't think ever. Yeah, we broke years high. But also, this AS2 is designed to fly the speeds up to a 1.4 Mach 1.4, approximately 1,000 miles per hour. And that gives wow. the ability for it to fly 70% faster than today's business jets. So, you know, that's, that's huge. And I want to pull up the yearly chart on it. Now, first, I'm going to pull up the three-year get an idea of about the three year i mean this thing was down here three years ago at, at 102 dollars and right now we're sitting here at 41018 with, with after market highs of 41169 someone just bought them one share here at 41169 <laughs> so here's your three year high which was right here right around and we had that yesterday that's where it stopped at and closed at at the 386.51 area we got a support level right down here right around the 370.35 and then maybe another support level right down here right around the 359.58 and I'm going to pull up the yearly chart and have a scander look at it real fast because I'm drawing these trend lines as I speak 
you see how much they lined up pretty much where they're supposed to this could have probably gone up just a little bit here to around 371.86 so i might go ahead and put me a little blue line channel in there for support level but we did have a huge breakout in the past week and when it broke out it broke out above that yearly high that three-year high so that was right there around 391.85 somewhere around in that vicinity and then i got another trend line where i'm going to put right here at at yesterday's close at 396.98 almost 397 dollars and then i'm going to put a little port channel right here right around 449 in case it decides to pull back a little bit I think I've seen a, a price target on this thing for three, $459. So you still might have a little chance to get up on that four, 459 area. I want to put a little resistance channel right here at 410, 21. I didn't count the wick. I counted the base of the candle. I'm going to pull it down to a 20-day chart and let you look at it real fast. Put another trend line right here, at, right there where that 100 SMA is at 382.29 then pretty much line up pretty good right here for and then I'm going to put one right down here just in case we have a knife on it and somebody wants to jump back in this trade go ahead and copy this chart if you like write down the support levels on it and I'm going to add one right here at 405.95 for another pullback support maybe but I think it's going to go ahead and run up to that 420 and then it'll probably start sizzling out once it gets up to about the 450 area, if we get up that high. So let's target 420 and 450 with a pullback support right around the $400 range. And that's Boeing, and congratulations to the room. And I want to give Undelay, one of our female traders that alerted this stock, this option trade out. And congratulations, ma'am. And we are dedicated to helping women traders keep that in mind and the next one we're going to talk about is fxi yeah and this is you know the last one for the night so yep. don't you worry won't keep you guys uh much longer yep. but this is good information because i'm telling you i even learned things and uh you know fxi is the uh china large cap and they also have uh you know the china large cap etf and um, this is a very interesting, interesting um, stock. Now, if you guys were to look it up, um, you will see that from a, st a stock perspective, um, it's very expensive. I mean, it's over $43. However, I do want to tell you the top 10 holdings in this stock. Now, I'm not going to read all 10. I'm just going to read like the, the, the two or three good ones. So the Bank of China is in this stock. Tencent Holdings, which you guys know Tencent. I mean, they're into so many things. And uh, also um, China Mobile Communications. So a lot of financial companies are in this uh, uh, particular stock uh, in this ETF. And uh, this is quite interesting. So FXI, I was noticing a lot of money and uh, volume of shares being traded on this and I thought let me look at the options here my goodness I'm glad we did because we were able to look at um, FXI has options for $43 uh, strike price they were they were at 34 cents they're now at 78 so that one there is like a hundred percent up from the initial entry and then we have another one, which is actually very slow moving. So I think this one's a little better. It's a little pricier, but there's more time. There's one for $44 strike price. What's the day? Expires March, March 15. And it's, uh, it was 69 cents when I got it. It's now 87. So it hasn't moved up a lot, almost, you know, about 18 cents. But you know what? Till March 15 is another month and a bit. So it's a little pricier because you're paying for more time to hold the option. Um, so this one here might still have room. And I want to hear Jim's thoughts on the actual chart because I did see a lot of a huge order. Almost a million shares were bought of the stock after hours on FXI. So the, to me, it's still very bullish, but I'd love to hear your thoughts. Yeah, you don't hear much about the trade war anymore. Not as much as we used to back in 
2018. I think they kind of use that as an excuse to uh, just to downplay the market a little bit. But you're not hearing it as much, and I'm and I also notice that there is kind of a rebound going on. So I just showing you this little Tasty Works is now where I opened up my new account for trading options, and that's so I've been trading options now for two weeks, and I think I'm getting better day by day. And I'm still a good uh, scalper, and I'm also doing a little bit of swing trading too, but mostly scalping and playing options. I think is going to be my next. The way I'm going to start swing trading these stocks because I can get in these better, bigger stocks at a much cheaper price and and it just seems like it's a little bit more profitable to me and I and I'll be able to get to, into these bigger tickers, so I'm excited about that. Let me pull up the year's chart here. I noticed on the year's chart that that is we still got a pretty good little uh, spread going on. We kind of hit right in here, this area right in here where I'm going to turn this thing red. So we can kind of get an idea where we are. Right about the, we're still under the support level that we had for the first part of last year, and we seen that we bought had a double bottom down here, right around thirty eight twenty one, right about the end of the year, and and she bounced on up. So we're sitting at a little resistance level here at at the at the forty three forty one area. And then I think it can go ahead and bounce on up to this $44 area. So I'm personally going to be looking at, at some options tomorrow also on this thing, right around $44. If not, I think it can go on up even a little higher to the, around $45 and then fill that gap, which is right around here, $45.50. Then you got, and if the news keeps coming and we do get an, uh, some kind of uh, mutual agreement with China, over this trade war, I think we're going to be back up in this area all over again. Because they've took a pretty good beating. And they stimulated their economy already. So a lot of that stimulation is probably in the works right now. And I do believe that we are at the, at the yearly pivot point. At the yearly, which is a resistance. Which will now become a little pivot point area. Back up, I mean, you know, first resistance, which was a support. It's just kind of confusing here because you got a big gap. And you got a, two different channels that are playing right here, and you got a big gap in between. And within four or five days, we were, you know, we went down from 45 all the way down to this $43 area in a matter of three to four days. So that's no big deal. I think we're going to go ahead and get back up there just as fast as we went down. And sometimes a stock can fall seven times faster than it can go up. But notice this little gap here at 38, and here we are already at 43. So that's a good $5 bounce right there. So FXI, I'm going to be looking at the option plays on this come tomorrow. I might look at some of them tonight and just get my idea where I want to get in in it. I always like to play a pullback. If I can get any kind of pullback, I'll jump into it. And that's FXI. And that's the uh, iShares Trust to China. LG, which is large cap ETF. Vegas, you got anything else you want to say about today? And no, I just want to say that I, I, ha I'm just like overwhelmed. Like so much, so much feedback I'm getting from people messaging me. I had some emails of people that said uh, they're not in the room, but listening to the videos and they're fine. They're making money. I had people that, you know, just visiting the room, they're not even a subscriber, which is fine. Like, you know, I, I, I certainly not looking to convert them to a subscriber. I want them to join because it's benefiting them. Don't just join for any other reason uh, that unless that it's benefiting you and you're learning and growing your account, because that's your goal at the end of each month is that your account is growing. Um, um, you got to reassess what's going on here. Uh, but I'm just really so flattered and just so, Oh, amazed and so excited and happy when I see all these messages. I mean, Jim sees them too. People messaging him that you know what they they trust his uh, support calls. They trust his targets, and it's not that he just you know calls these numbers out of a hat. He actually knows he's the one of the best chartists I've ever met. I've told you guys this before, and people just appreciate it so much. And you know. Um, the one last thing I want to say, you know, a lot of time during the week and even on the weekends, I have, I speak to people on the phone. Like I've had people message me and say, can you help me? Can I talk to you? 
And I go, I go out of my way to call people and I spend hours on my weekends and even sometimes evenings during the week to speak to people. Uh, some people have, um, you know, been misled or uh, misdirected and so frustrated. They've lost so much money. And, you know, I, I give them my time and, and try to, um, you know, try to give them some good direction on maybe some strategies they should look at. And, you know, at the end of the day, um, you know, I do it because I love helping people and it gets, it's very rewarding. And, uh, you know, to know that you're making a difference in someone that's had a hard time and, you know, I've been there, so I know what it's like to struggle as a trader and to feel like, oh my God, I'm never going to make it. Or when am I going to make some money or when I'm like, all these trades are terrible or, or everything I buy tanks. We've been there, we've done it. And uh, sometimes just changing your strategy and your niche. And you know what? I'm learning more and more about options and I'm loving options. And I'm finding that it's a very great strategy to help people with small accounts. So I'm making it my mission. So I love everybody. I love stocks. And you know what? I love options now too. <laughs> so if you're out there listening, please subscribe, follow, come by the room, come visit. And uh, we'd love to hear your success stories. So please share them. We want to welcome all beginner traders to our room and also all the ladies that want to learn how to trade with us. And we really enjoy uh, people that are having hard times with their accounts to come to our room because we do have some good mentors in our room. And we just want to close this out with I Love Stocks. Today's February the 5th, 2019. And have a great day and we'll see you tomorrow. Good night.